It's basically like Lissandra Watcher is the only thing I'm scared of right now. No one is promised tomorrow. Lissandra Watcher is scary. I'm not too scared of too much else besides that right now. I do kind of have infinite stuns. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Malphite Yasuo. Let's continue Malphite Spotlight Night, which so far has been a perfect success with an Ionia deck with Yasuo as our second champion. This one's not going to be as much on the uh, landmarks. It's going to be kind of tough for us to level up uh, Malphite, to be honest, with this deck. Basically, we're going to be relying on Eye of the Rohoric. We're going to need a Daybreak Eye of the Rohoric, um, and we're going to need to get you know additional copy of it whenever you have Daybreak. Then that's 10 mana worth of landmarks, and you need 10 mana to level up Malphite. So that's kind of like our, our 5 mana level up our Malphite card, because besides that... We're only going to have a Monastery of Hirana. That's going to be our other landmark. But that's Monastery of Hirana by itself is not going. Sorry, it's not going to be enough to level up our Malphite, even if we found all three. So we're really going to need um, Eye of the Rahoric. But anyway, let's kind of talk about our deck. But besides that, um, we're going to be a Yasuo stun deck. And the reason why these two work together, and you're like, why are we even playing Malphite and why are we doing this Eye of the Rahoric thing, is because Malphite's champion spell does stun all enemies and that is incredible with Yasuo right because if you have Yasuo it's it's going to be like killing all your enemies whenever you're stunning like that so that's going to be really cool um, even either Horik does stunning for the enemies and we're going to have a lot of other stun cards we're going to have Concussive Palm we're going to have Steel Tempest um, you know some other ways to stun there we'll also have Homecoming which will be two different recalls which will help level up Yasuo all that kind of stuff top end we got besides Malphite we have one Yone one Infinite Mind Splitter that we'll be able to stun at different enemies, um, kind of splitting those up. Um, but then the rest of our deck, though, is going to be like a Monastery of Hirana deck. And so this is round start, create a Sanctuary in hand. That Sanctuary allows us to recall an ally. Each time we recall an ally, that's one recall for leveling up your Yasuo, so we can level up our Yasuo pretty quickly. But then also we have a lot of units that do some really good things to help us uh, that we want to recall. Like we have Dancing Droplet here, two of those. If we recall it, we draw a card. We have Spacey's Catcher that works perfectly with Monastery kind of either way. We can discard that Sanctuary that we create to just invoke a Celestial card that costs three or less, or we can put, pick Sketcher back up and you know discard something else and invoke. And the main thing that we want to invoke that costs three or less, the main reason why we want Spacey's Catcher is because with the Celestial cards, for three mana, there's the card that double stuns, right? That stuns two things, and that's perfect for our deck. And so that's that's what we really want to have our our spacey sketcher hit. Besides that, we have like Solari Sunhawk, which daybreak stun, and Concussive Palm, of course, which is stun and make the tail of the dragon. Both of these are amazing to pick up with the monastery, because then you can just continue to stun with you can put them back in your hand and then re-stun. That's awesome. And then we also have the two priestess, which we can um, invoke and then we can pick it back up and re-invoke. So those are also gr go great with the Monastery. Finally, we got Fey Blade Twirler, another um, payoff for all of our stun and recalls that gets the plus two, plus zero each time that we do stun or recall. And then we have one Syncopation that can either protect our champions or if we have like a 20 power Blade Twirler, we can switch spots whenever we're attacking and have that Blade Twirler hit for lethal. So one copy of Syncopation. All right, that's the deck. It's Yasuo Malphite. Let's go ahead and uh, give it a try, and we'll go play five games in ranked. Uh, that's incorrect, Mossy. No, recalls anywhere count towards Yasuo's level up. Yeah, you, all you have to do is you can recall your own units, and that counts towards Yasuo's level up. Yasuo will not strike, do, do the two damage to it. Yasuo only does two damage on enemies, but if you but it levels up on recalls for any units. All right, so we are a Yasuo deck that has Yasuo. That's always a good start. Let's go ahead and mulligan these invoke cards that are a little slow against the fast lurkers. Hmm. 
Usually you, you like having champions, but we don't want too many of these champions. I am actually going to discard the Malphite. Okay, I like Messenger, but I also like... I'm, I'll just grab Messenger. I like Messenger, but I also like Moonsilver of, like, make Yasuo cost three. That's also kind of interesting of, like, save two spell mana for Steel Tempest, make Yasuo cost three. Really hope that's not Pike. Wow. So they have the free attack thing right now? No. Huh. I kind of want to keep both of these. At least for now. I don't know. I guess I could probably get rid of Star Shaping. We don't have like a ton of Nexus healing in our deck though. I kinda wanna keep this Infinite Mind Splitter. I feel like the Infinite Mind Splitter could be awesome. Alright, there's Crescent Strike, good. That's the exact card we want. So turning Star Shaping into Crescent Strike. Probably pretty good to do that. So the reason why I don't want to necessarily just wait till my next draw is, you know, because um, we're, we're playing Yasuo the next round, so we'd have to wait for two more draws. Let's actually just do this. Alright, probably playing the either of Horik this round. Alright, not playing either horror this round. Okay, so we can assume that they're going to have um, this thing, Bone Skewer. So, do I want to go Steel Tempest first and then Concussive Palm? I miss out, I miss out on the 3-2 if I go Concussive Palm first, but it would put a Yasuo back into the deck. I don't like that this Yasuo is going to be vulnerable forever. So if I, start with Steel, if I start with Steel Tempest, then we only have one Yasuo left in the entire deck. I guess I got to go this route. Okay, um, I think that's okay, is it? Yeah, cause I mean, alright, so I can't keep this, I can't keep the Yasuo alive. So I guess I'm gonna just keep the other Yasuo in my hand. So Pone's gotten pretty fortunate so far. They have gotten two different Death From Below's, like not even just Pikes, but Death From Below's, which is... Um, pretty awesome. Absolutely. And Pockets asks, can you confirm that the Yasuo skin card hits with more speed and aggression than the vanilla skin? And absolutely it does. It's so hard to get a death from below, right? Like, we... <laughs> we have played many... Um... Many like all in pike decks recently and like it's so hard to get a death from below and my opponent is getting two death from below is they're, they're living the life like that is that's so hard to do Follow 
So if they have more removal, we're kind of dead, you know, like that's just kind of what it is right now. I got more removal. Alright, so the opponent lived the Lurk Dream. GG's. Good game. Alright, so 0 oh and 1. That was the dream. Double death from below. Okay, we got an aggro deck. Let's see if we can stay alive. I do like Spirit's Refuge. But even though these things are kind of cheap, they don't play good defense. We're going to go ahead and send those both back. Try to get like a stun or a recall to build up this Fey Blade Twirler a little bit. So that it's not just a 1 3. And then once it's a little larger, we'll have the Spirit's Refuge. Think it fast? Cute. <laughs> no prey, no pay. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I have never seen Rek'Sai be as scary as Pike. I would think Pike is kind of all what it's about. Do I discard Yone? I guess I could discard Monastery. Yeah, I guess I discard Monastery. Heh <laughs> 1-1 one, one Serpent. GG. I'm glad I discarded Monastery. Try to keep up. Gotta go with the flow. I don't really have a good plan about dealing with this misfortune right now. Like a fish in water. <laughs> of course, remember we. Alright, so we know that they have <laughs> some Noxian Fervors in hand. these times, a Serpent was a 2-1 would make such a big difference, but 1-1 one, one Serpent is kind of unplayable. The Fervor is, of course, a really big deal about, like, trying to get this um, Spirit's Refuge online. Because they're going to they're gonna block Blade Twirler and then Fervor it away. So the Charger has Overwhelm, which means it can't just get stopped. Spirit's Refuge goes. Not a fervor. Never stop shooting. Still paint is just accidental art. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm still alive for a minute. I wouldn't necessarily say that I have the best long-term aspect still with this game, but we're still alive for a minute. I could have gone like the Crescent Strike to try to hold up Spirit's Refuge, but I just felt like the, the, this was the better play. Man, they got another spell. So they, they have two more. Man, Sprayfin is just so good. <laughs> so we know they have, they have multiple of their Sprayfin spells. No, yeah, we're not we're not gonna level up Malphite this game. It's not exactly about that. Need to give this blade twirler overwhelm, but I have no ways to do that, so that's not a good start. Why are you here? I know what I'm doing. We live here. Yeah, I don't I don't have a good option here, really. Between this and like fervor. Oh gosh, come on. Cause now I know that they still have a fervor in hand from from like these things. Like they don't yeah, so that's just and it keeps hitting this, that's just Good game. That misfortune's leveled up. Okay, Lissandra Talia. I'll keep the priestess, kind of mulligan everything else, looking for homecoming, something to deal with. Um, landmarks. It's a pretty bad sign that they kept three out of the four. Also a pretty bad sign that we have two Malphites in our opener. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. I probably should be playing that. So the problem with playing that is I guess I guess they had they didn't have round one frozen thrall. If they did have round one frozen thrall, then we wouldn't really want to play that. I also should probably just attack for one. Alright, cool. Because we want Falling Comet to be able to obliterate a landmark. And by playing that Blade Twiller, that would mean that like this next round I wouldn't have the mana to be able to play the Falling Comment. But they didn't have the round one Frozen Thrall, and so they don't have like a Frozen Thrall that's about to be um, about to be gone. But yes, as I showed, I should have attacked for one first before playing that. But it's one point of damage. Hopefully that doesn't. Uh, do, hopefully it's not too bad for us. Instead of playing Solara Priestess and making, hey, that card's cool. I'm making their Avalanche and everything like that so much better. Just decided to pass the round. Bask in her radiant blessing. No, just let him die. 
I don't really want them to tally a copy and just obliterate it. Both got eight cards in hand. This is going to be a longer game. For obvious reasons, don't like seeing the clock hand. Countdown to obliterate the weakest enemy. I'm worried about this, like they can, you know, like have like the spells that advance at any point in time. into some weird rune terror games sometimes and this is kind of looking like one of those weird rune terror games their plan might have been to like advance it four rounds with this thing and then have the draclorn turn it into two eight eights but they don't have room for two eight eights right now I kind of want to play Lunari Priestess and then Sanctuary, the Lunari Priestess. That would allow them to attack and me not have any mana available. I don't know if that's really a problem or not. I don't think that's really a problem. Wasn't completely thrilled about any of those. Here's our chance. The deal four, deal one, while killing um, Lissandra doesn't do very much else. They don't have board space. hand or board space like it's like an avalanche and ice shard like kills these things I'm not yeah they have an instant sentry I probably should I probably should have healed the warrior instead of healing my nexus problem with homecoming is that they if they kill my blade twirler in response then it does nothing I 
I don't like that. Now who's got the upper hand? Oh, right. I kind of forgot about the Yasuo. I was just thinking the, the three damage from the ground slam. I should have just killed... I should have done the, the clock hand. Alright, so that's two of the three frozen thralls. That would have been okay to have. Not bad. That would have been not bad to have. We're still going to be just fine. It's basically like Lissandra Watcher is the only thing I'm scared of right now. No one is promised tomorrow. Lissandra Watcher is scary. I'm not too scared of too much else besides that right now. I do kind of have infinite stuns. Also, them killing my Yasuo, that's kind of scary, but we got another Yasuo. But, but like, they don't have very many cards. This one has a promising future on it. Just gonna put it back in their hand. I actually want this extra one mana. Like, Concussive Palm plus Meteor Shower plus Steel Tempest is 11 mana. Yeah. That's game. There's replacing an 8 4 Overwhelm with something random. Yeah, like, we, we had that on Lockdown. Watcher was the only thing that I was scared of, but. You know, we had Concussive Palm in hand. Like, if they ever, like, play the Watcher, we could just try to stun it around start and then try to figure it out from there. Okay, we're back at Thralls again. Hopefully, so let's see if we can, you know, keep our Yasuo in play and, you know, kind of keep them off the board. You know, like, we can stun, stun stuff for a long time, and that's kind of what our hand is, is just a bunch of stun. It's a good hand. Like, all those are good cards, but I'm going to still send them back because I want to find Yasuo. Okay, glad we have Homecoming for that thing. Sorry, predictions. So much better when we have it, a mod here that does it. Okay, where are we at? So I like the Traveler, but I don't know if we're going to have like that much time for the Traveler. Right? Like, we already have... Two different priestesses, which are just invoke units. So, like getting another invoke unit. Like we don't have all the, the time in the world. But the 
these are not the cards I want. I want the six mana Obliterate. Golden Sister doesn't matter. It's either Meteor Shower or Warrior. Meteor Shower is just like, can kill Lissandra and nothing else. Warrior can kind of challenge Lissandra and nothing else. I guess I'm just going to take the Meteor Shower because it's spell mana and therefore easier to cast. So the Advance a Landmark 2 Rounds card is Focus Speed, right? It's not Burst Speed. Like if I, if I homecoming this Frozen Thrall, they're not, they're not doing that, are they? I don't think so, but I also kind of don't want to. I guess if they get an 8-8, they get an 8-8. I can bounce the 8-8 also. Not gonna let them focus speed that thing. Trying to get 8 8s, opponent. I don't like it. Also, I could use a Yone. How, how do I get cards out of my hand? I have 10 cards in hand. If I play this, it replaces itself. If I play Monster, it replaces itself. So basically, everything replaces itself. I can just play a Yone. I could play this Eye of the Rahoric also. Which I might as well. We'll just have a level up Yasuo whenever we have, or sorry, sorry, uh, Malphite. We'll just have a level up Malphite whenever we have Malphite. Yep, there's that time in the bottle they have been holding in hand. I will lead my own path. Alright, not so sure about. <laughs> playing either a right about now. Yeah, we could play Tasty People. There's plenty of ways to get Nexus healing, like lifesteal units in here if we wanted to. And yeah, maybe the Priestess needs to be more Nexus healing units. Um, because we've had a pretty full hand all of these games. Would have been a lot better with the Yasuo. Basically everything. Very good last two turns to them. Talia clock in. And advance, advance, clock, advance plus Talia plus clock in. Very good last couple of turns for them. Okay, so I just played that card immediately, but to be honest, that may not have been my best play. Well, maybe it was. I don't know. Because I think Infinite Mind Splitter was my best play of like stun, stun like the 8 8 and the 4 6 forever. Yeah, that was my best play. I just kind of played this right away. And I don't have the other stuns that I need. Heart, greet the night. 
So my opponent easily has the win, yet they are still emoting against, like, with, like, the best meta deck, they're emoting against the Yasuo deck. <laughs> they gotta feel pretty good about themselves. Yeah, so the Yasuo wasn't the best play by me. I should have played the Mind Splitter, but still, I, I doubt we would have won, so. Okay, so the Priestess looks like maybe it's gotta be something else. We are just kind of ending up with too many cards. We do have lots and lots of card advantage, but we're ending up with too many cards and not enough defense. I wouldn't say the Turbo Lissandra is a, a tough matchup for us. I think that that's actually what we want to face because we, because, you know, like all, their whole plan is just like the 80 Fearsomes and we have like the Homecomings and the Stuns and stuff like that. I think that that's honestly, that's honestly a good matchup, right? Like that, that was our win the round before. Um, but that time we just had, we had too many units and we just didn't draw, like that time we just didn't draw Yasuo until very late and we just didn't have any of our stun, our stun things. Like we had no, like Steel Tempest, Concussive Palms, and no Yasuo, right? Like that's, that, that game is basically the only way that we lose that matchup. But I think that's a very good matchup for us. Anyway, this is not a good hand. Kind of in any respect. I guess I could keep Solari Priestess. But I think I'm sending it all back. So we took out the two Lunari Priestess and put in two Solari Sunforger. So now we, you know, just to give us a little bit more, um, a little bit better blockers and a little bit more Nexus healing. Uh, thinking also that Solari Sunforger could work pretty well with the with the landmark that has it bounce, because you can have like this 5-4 life steal. You can put it back in your hand and uh, daybreak it again and have it be life steal again. Okay, so that's a Rek'Sai on top because they got to lurk twice. The other option though was putting in the three mana 4-2 and the three mana 4-2 is looking a little bit better right now. have already been able to play that. Oh, I should have just played the, the droplet again. Shining gifts from the sky. Should have played that droplet last round. Not fantastic. They've lurked four times in four rounds, including passing on round one. Monastery plus Concussive Palm can do a little bit of work. But it's not going to be easy. Not let this Rek'Sai attack. Like usual, life would be better if we had Yasuo. You cannot win. 
But obviously this is kind of the bad part is that I don't get to just keep on picking up the Concussive Palm. Hopefully we can draw another... Concussive Palm. Pretty sure I'm just playing the Infinite Mind Splitter this round. If I wait around, I can try to set up Spirit's Refuge plus Infinite Mind Splitter, but. I am very strong by the mountain. Probably need to try to protect Infinite Mind Splitter and not let it die to that thing. You know, we got the Syncopation, we got the Spirit's Refuge. We should probably protect it a little better. Bone Skewer. That sounds like the name of a card. So yes, I could have spent two mana and drawn one card with the Sanctuary Droplet, but with all these spells and everything, how we're facing an aggro that we're a little behind, I felt like we gotta be able to have all the mana we can. Sorry, Yasuo. If I sink a patient, we have seven mana left. It's okay, I'm not going anywhere. Cool, neither am I. They have Bone Skewer, I'm just gonna lose. Yeah, I guess maybe that was a Syncopation Waste. Yeah, I guess I guess it was a Syncopation Waste, wasn't it? I guess that, that play is probably gonna cost me. Yeah, I guess it was. It, it was a Syncopation Waste. I, I that was... Because obviously the 1-1 one, one can just block the 9-3 just like the 2-3 can, and... I had the vision of keeping that 2-3 alive so I was going to be able to recall it and keep playing it with the Yasuo in play and obviously that just didn't work out and that was just a big mistake by me. Destiny waits. So yes, that was a, a complete syncopation waste. Sensual says, I think something they could do is increase the cost of Bone Skewer to 3. It doesn't mess up any of the other mechanics, but still a substantial nerf. No. I would not recommend that. I think Bone Skewer at 2 is perfectly fine. What I would recommend is nerfing... Like, okay. If you want to nerf something, you nerf Pike. Because Pike, just how it's designed, is just completely ridiculous. Right? Like this... Yeah. <laughs> you don't... You know, like, that's, that's what you do. Like, when there's... When there's something that's broken, you nerf the broken thing. You don't just nerf, like, ancil ancillary cards that are just kind of whatever. You just nerf the broken thing. At least, that's my thinking. Now, Lurkers overall isn't necessarily that good of a deck in my opinion, but Pike is incredible. And so Pike makes everything else look really good of how good Pike is. And so that doesn't necessarily mean... I, I don't necessarily think that things have to be nerfed in the deck. But Pike is incredible. Obviously we're living on the edge. If they have any kind of removal spell, we're dead. If they don't, we have a shot. Not a good shot, but we have a shot. But if they got any kind of removal, we're dead.
Living on by a thread. Some things never die. Just a thread. Sunlight guiding my brethren. I have to play this right now before the meteor shower, of course, because if I wait till after the meteor shower, then I can't play it. You just got kind of multiple death from belows. Yeah, I mean that's. I think we've played against two lurker opponents today, and they've both gotten multiple death from belows. It's so hard to get death from below. Like we, I just spent like two straight days of playing all in pike decks, and I like. In five rounds, I got one death from below in five rounds. How do we have two opponents that each get multiple death from belows? Yuck. Okay, so we struggled with the aggro decks um, with this one. And, uh, you know, still trying to figure that out. Like, maybe not the Solari Sunforger. Um, you know, trying to figure out what to do with the aggro there. But as we can see, we have a fantastic late game with like the Malphite giving you the late game, the Yasuo giving you the late game, all the stuns and just like the uh, all the invokes with like uh, Solari Priestess and uh, Monastery. It's just like, how do you not die to the to the aggro decks? And so I probably just don't have enough against the aggro decks. Um, you know, like we could have like instead of Droplet Sketcher, things that are just better against aggro, better blockers. You know, you can have Blue Sentinel blocks fairly well. There's a lot of lifesteal units, Tasty Fate Folk. There's a lot of lifesteal units in these regions, and you, you can play more lifesteal units than what I was playing, and I guess you got to do that. But I do like the uh, Monastery plus Solari Sunhawk plus um, Concussive Palm, all that with Yasuo and stuff like that. But it's a tough tech to play. Um, it's it is it's a difficult deck to play. It's a it's a slow deck, and um, you know you gotta you gotta um, sequence correctly. And if you make like any mistakes, I think I made some mistakes in some of the games that we played. Make any mistakes, it's gonna be kind of tough. But if you have Yasuo in play, and if your opponent doesn't kill your Yasuo, Yasuo can do incredible stuff. And so this one's kind of maybe a little bit too much more of a Yasuo deck. I know like some people were saying like as far as Malphite Spotlight Night, they wanted to see like Yasuo and Malphite together. This one wasn't as much a Malphite deck. Didn't work as well, I don't think. Just didn't really have like landmarks and stuff like that. Didn't didn't really play as much defense as what I needed to. But um, yeah, Death from Below is still in absolutely incredible. And so two of our opponents just played multiple Death from Belows. And those there's not many decks in the entire game that beat multiple Death from Belows with Lurkers. Not going to lie. Like that beats you know, 95% of, of all games. And so, like, if you take take away those, because those are just kind of, you know, dip, yeah, like, nobody's beating that. We're we're one and two in our other games, and, you know, that's not so bad. You know, one out of three, I mean, that's that's respectable. All right, but that's going to be it here for Mal Malphite Yasuo. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, feel free to leave those comments and let me know if you got other Malphite decks or anything like that. Got some suggestions on, you know, what kind of units to play, what to take out, what to put in to help out in the aggro matchups. I'd like to hear it. All right, but that's going to be it here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.